Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So me and Daniel Jury, which you've seen in many videos, are gonna talk about 10 different ways that you can easily, on your one meal a day diet, go in the direction of suppressing appetite. Because so many people find on their one meal a day diet journey that they just get really, really hungry. And this is something that you can easily go in the direction of overcoming through the 10 different ways that we will mention to you shortly. So I'm gonna let Daniel first start off with one that he will want to share with you. For me, coffee. Coffee is very fun to drink when I get that, um, that hunger, that stomach growling, and I start feeling like I need to consume something. Coffee for me is super tasty, so it kind of satisfies that, um, that desire to taste something, you know, something tasty. Um, and then it gives you some energy if you're feeling kind of drained from, from the hunger. So it gives you some energy, satisfies you, and it's a natural appetite suppressant. So um, kaboom, I mean, that's like the full package. Yeah. For some people, um, coffee is not so good for them. I've heard um, in, in Ayurveda, they, Ayurveda recommends coffee for kapha types. Uh, so if you, got, if you notice you have a fast digestion, um, already coffee may not be so good for you but for me it's like uh, medicine a lot of the time it, it really helps me so yeah and make sure that it is black coffee do not be doing right. bulletproof coffee it breaks you out of a purely fasted state a lot of people think that it does not so it's certainly be rare and what I say is my own personal experience I cannot touch coffee at all yeah. the reason being is I've done a lot of detoxification over the years and anything that's a stimulant is just far too much to me and I found this in the past as well even when I wasn't as clean within my body so if it works for you then definitely have some black coffee. And I would personally recommend not actually drinking more than two ounces of an espresso that's been made from freshly ground beans at Organics. It's one of the most heavily sprayed pesticides crops. And yeah, a lot of coffee's actually rancid because it's been grown, um, because it's been pre-ground. And Ori Hoffmeckler talks about this more, which I'll put a link down below for his research and information that he talks about this in more detail and why he only recommends taking it in a fasted state and in the amount that I've mentioned as well. And yeah, do you want to add anything else onto that or? Um, if you want your coffee to be sweeter, you can add stevia to it. Stevia is a, um, is a natural plant-based sweetener that doesn't have any calories. And I find it to be pretty tasty. Some people don't like it as much, but um, I find it works great for coffee. So. Yeah. And it doesn't give you an insulin spike either. There right. are some sweeteners out there that do. I think it's one such as aspartame and so other ones that you need to do your research yeah. up online because I can't remember all of that. So yeah, and the second one is, which a lot of people are aware of, is making sure that you are just well hydrated. Right. And yeah, there is a lot of people who do dry fasting where you abstain from water, but this is not for everyone. So make sure if you're feeling hungry, just go and drink quite a lot of water. And in many cases, it will get rid of your appetite completely. Number three is uh, apple cider vinegar. And this stuff is like the bomb for just, it, it really gives your stomach a lot, to, a lot to deal with and it can totally destroy any form of appetite that you had previously. And I find on a fast, it gives me a lot of energy. Oh yeah. Um, there's, there's scientific studies showing it helps fat loss. Um, amongst a lot of other things. Um, yeah, and it helps also reduce insulin even quicker right. as well. And yeah, I found, you say with the energy thing, I found that it gives me energy without me feeling the stimulating effects of what coffee does. So right. I find that, that yeah. personally, for me, it's a better alternative. Uh -huh. And it also helps aid the body in detoxifying more as well. It's right. a good thing to remove heavy metals. It's good for getting rid of candida overgrowth. It has such a broad spectrum of amazing different benefits. So yeah, I highly agree with Daniel with the apple cider vinegar. It's absolutely amazing. And what I say is make sure that it's raw, organic, unpasteurized, unfiltered apple cider vinegar with the mother. One of the most widely known ones is Bragg's. If you don't know where to get it from, where you cannot source it, I'll put some links down below for a supplier that can deliver it to your door. Um, soda water, I've been getting into recently. I've been having some days like a soda water a day and it's it's super tasty it's and no calories in it and it's um it, like the apple cider vinegar it, it gives the stomach something to deal with so if you're feeling like you got that empty stomach and it's like oh you know i need to put something in there soda water is super tasty 
Yeah, because all of that carbonation just makes you feel a lot more fuller. And I learned this on my intermittent fasting journey a long time from Kino Body, and he's helped so many people around the world, just like I have now. And yeah, I remember when my dad got into intermittent fasting and he was finding that he had a lot of appetite, I recommended soda water to him, which some people call sparkling water, and it just helped him suppress that appetite really, really easily. So it's something that I highly, highly recommend. And yeah, number five would be actually a combination of the apple cider vinegar and sparkling water. And it's for obvious reasons why, due to the reasons we've mentioned earlier, but when you use them together, they're working like synergistically and symbiotically to give you even greater benefits for suppressing the appetite. So for, from my own like knowledge on all the different things I know, I say this is the number one best thing out of all of them. Number six, super useful one for me is exercise. Yeah. So when you're, you know, you're, when you're exercising, you can kind of distract yourself from this hunger that you've got going on. And um, really, food is energy. So when you're hungry, what you're wanting is energy. And you can find that when you exercise, you have more energy afterwards somehow. Yeah. It's, and so it seems paradoxical that you spend energy to get energy, but oftentimes it, it works really well. So um, walking, if, you, if, if you're not into like heavy, you know, we did a run this morning and you know, we're gonna go to the gym afterwards and train, but walking is great. Um, jump rope, do some yoga, do a, do a headstand, play around, just move, swim. I mean, um, any, yeah, well, any form of movement. Yeah, can, whatever exercise that you feel naturally drawn to, just do yeah. it. Just don't do it for too long and for too hard. Because then, yeah, it can massively drop your energy levels, have a negative effect on your nervous system, your adrenals. So just be very mindful with your training. And yeah, like he was saying, it can actually increase your energy levels. The reason being is it's dropping CO2 within the body. It's increasing the oxygen levels. It's giving you an endorphin release. It's stimulating the lymphatic system. It's improving blood circulation. And most people are sitting way too long every single day. And this has a whole host of negative effects. It makes everything stagnant and it doesn't make you feel good. And we had sat down for hours and hours and hours yesterday because it was raining, so we couldn't really go out and do things and we didn't feel as good. And then we did an infrared sauna, we exercised, and then we was like, wow, we really feel like we have infused the light back within us. Right. So, yeah. and, and when you exercise during fasting, I mean, there's, there's a multitude of benefits. I mean, this is like, this is amazing to do. I mean, you're, you're burning fat, you're, you're burning, um, you're burning energy, and so if you burn through all your sugar, you burn through that fat, then you you look lean, you feel good, and you're burning protein as energy. You know, you're you're doing the autophagy, anti-aging, self-cannibalism. You're eating yourself and then replenishing your body. So you're you're kind of you're you're backwards aging when you exercise during a fast. So I mean, that's a kaboom. Yeah, that's it. It's not just giving you the benefits of suppressing your appetite, the effects that it's giving you that are positive for your mental health, your physical health, your hormonal right. production, even increasing your maximum lifespan as shown through scientific research, right. combining the exos with fasting is just tremendous. And it gets you into a deeper fasting state even quicker and it lowers your insulin levels even more. So if you want to optimize your weight loss benefits, this is what I highly recommend. Do it on an everyday basis whether you are trying to do it for suppressing your appetite or not. And this is why we do running every single morning at the mor in the morning to get us into that deeper fasted state quicker so then we can get into a state of ketosis faster and get that ketone production going on, which is amazing brain fuel and body fuel. Number seven, uh, this is something that I've experimented with and, and had great results, is straight up solar power. Um, I already mentioned that food is energy and so when you're hungry, you're just really wanting energy. The sun is, is a very pure form of energy, a very powerful form of energy. Um, so, I mean, this can involve sun gazing, this can involve sun bathing. Um, yeah, just go get some sun, wh wh however you gotta do it when you're hungry and you won't, you won't be as hungry anymore. It's, it's almost similar to exercising. It, it um, can get you into a deeper fasted state. It can help pull out some of the bad blood you've got. Um, and, and give you some energy and kaboom, you're, you got solar charge afterwards and you get a nice tan too, so yeah, that's which a perk. Is amazing. <laughs> and yeah, it's literally what gives life force on this earth. Right. So what gives life force can give it to us as well. 
And yeah, I have heard a lot of people saying that when they've moved to Copenhagen, Thailand, like where we are now, that they've noticed from being in the sun a lot, that their appetite has suppressed. I haven't been observing it enough to notice it myself, but yeah, I haven't been being mindful around it, so maybe it is for me, maybe not. But what I can say is, from my own personal experience of doing sun gazing in the past, that it suppressed my appetite like crazy. It made yeah. me actually feel like I was full of food in a really good satiated way. So from my own personal experience, it works amazing, but make sure with sun gazing, the only do it within an hour of the sunrise and an hour after the sun starts to set, because at that time, the UVA and UVB rays are inactive, so it will not damage your eyes whatsoever. You can do some more research up on that online. I absolutely recommend it to so many people out there. It's an ancient practice that is just gonna give you a whole host of amazing benefits, more than I could ever even possibly imagine to even try and explain to you. And number nine, which I've talked about this in other videos, is just making sure that you are busy and try and be as productive as possible. And when you're being busy, try and do things that you really, really enjoy. Because if you're doing mundane jobs that are really boring, then your brain is gonna start thinking about food. So yeah, just go out there and do whatever you have to do, whether it's skateboarding or reading a book or studying information or whatever just makes you go within that present moment with that specific thing and be absorbed completely in it where you have that radical focus rather than that fractured focus. And I'm telling you, this works so well for me. When I'm feeling hungry a lot of time, I will go and do some of the things I mentioned earlier or I would just go and get on with my day and I will go and edit a video or make a video like now and then my mind goes completely off of it. And yeah, what's your experience with this? Have you found similar things? Yeah, I, I have to stay busy when I'm fasting. Like, because you have so much energy a lot of the time that it's just like, uh, like what am I going to direct <laughs> this energy at? Like, I got I to gotta do something. So, um, um, but oftentimes it can be the opposite. And, you, and you'll go into a deeper state of fasting and you need to go lie down or go lay in a hammock. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you feel like you need to take a nap, go take a nap. Yeah, and what I'll do is if, if I feel like that, like he's mentioning, I'll either go and take a nap if I feel a bit tired, or I will go and listen to something on YouTube that I can learn from, whether it's something yeah. with calisthenics or inner healing or some self-development stuff. Yeah. You've got the different choices between those things. Right. And something that will go alongside that, which is the last but not least, is number 10. And Daniel was the one that mentioned this, because he, he, well, I think he has experience with it. I don't know. He's, mention it so we should find out meditation I, I drew a blank there you were like number 10 Daniel I'm like meditation that yeah cause I said it and he was like I was fucking it was blank, like dude. it was like meditation with a question mark yeah it's like so it, I, it, I, it kind of I puked it out like yeah, I didn't like, mean to say it but it's like, meditation something inside of me was like fucking Daniel it's meditation remember I'm like meditation oh yeah <laughs> That's a good one. That was brilliant. If you're trying to suppress an emotion with food, which is very common, you just need to go sit with that emotion or, or walk with it or just stand with it. Do it. Yeah, you know, yeah just d feel the emotion because it's very common to... The stomach is, is an emotional... That's where your emotional fire is. And so if you put food on that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put the fire out, per se. And it... it you know, it's going to suppress that feeling. So you might just need to go feel that feeling and and be present with it, like Danny said, and and um, resolve that first. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to bury food on top of it because it's still going to be there. It's going to come up eventually in some form. Um, so you're going to have to deal with it eventually. So why not now, you know? Yeah, that's it. And so many people are emotionally numbing themselves and using what they call comfort foods. And this is why a lot of people don't want to do fasting because they're not meeting their emotional needs. Yeah. And doing this meditation where you're being present with it. I do this a lot with many different things like emotions that come up in my body. And I'm just present with it. And I accept it and love it and say, it's okay to feel this way. It's normal to feel this way. And I show compassion and love and empathy to that unresolved emotion within me and that emotional charge that could be linked to me wanting the desire for food and that actually meets my own needs and a lot of time for me i'm all about doing emotional oh. healing and healing past unresolved traumas with the completion process taught by teal swan and yeah by actually meeting what i would call my inner child's needs and my emotional body's needs and being the best parent to myself and meeting the needs of my inner child that my parents did not 
then actually doing that and accepting the motion, not making it wrong, processing it, feeling it, and moving through it, then it can go. And then, yeah, I don't feel a desire for food, so to speak. So that's just something to be aware of. A lot of that may be too much for some people who so don't need to take this on board if you don't want to, but I found that it's been something so key for me to not also help me go in the direction of not going to eat loads of different foods when I don't want to when fasting, but also stopping me from sabotaging myself and having these self-destructive patterns and self-hate patterns. So yeah, it's helped reprogram so many negative beliefs and patterns and behaviors for me, so. I just wanted to add one last tip or piece of advice is just to straight up tell yourself no. Just have um, self-discipline. And, and you know, Dr. Noon Amin Ra, he says that self-imposed self-discipline is the surest way to improve quality of life period without a doubt <laughs> and it's i think he's on point right it's it's a profound piece of advice and so when you're feeling like this desire to you know eat food you're do, you're trying to do one meal a day and you're like ah oh, you know i'm it's lunchtime and i'm hungry and my friends are eating and they're you know they got this food and they're offering it to me and you start to reach for it have the strength to just say no just straight up tell yourself no and save yourself for that meal at the end of the night and it will reward you, I promise you. You will be rewarded for your self-discipline at the end of the day. Um, so, I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to, is, is just oh, having yeah. the self-discipline to say no and do, choose to do something else instead. Take a big breath in and enjoy that breath. Or, you know, go on a walk or read a book or do something, you yeah. know, save yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I would definitely say that's an amazing tip. Anyone that has succeeded with anything in life to improve themselves have had to have, or have had to have, major self-discipline. So this is something you really need to work on and so many people in the world have no self-discipline whatsoever. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing because having self-discipline with things that are gonna better yourself and improve yourself and your life is a positive thing. And what I would say is, once you start doing this over a time period, like a longer time period, one meal a day, for example, I've been out to restaurants with people in the middle of the day. I don't have any temptation to eat. I don't even have to force myself to say no. It's just like, no, it doesn't make sense to me to eat food early in the day. And I always think about, how would I feel if I ate that? Is it gonna make me feel better or not? And if it's not gonna make me feel better, then I'm not gonna do it. And I have so much self-love for myself that I will not abuse my body in that way and affect it in a negative way. So for me to be the best version of myself, and have the most productive day with so much energy and do so much. I need to be sticking to one meal a day. So this is something that will develop over time. And doing the completion process that I mentioned earlier, learning to like self-love yourself and overcome self-destructive and self-sabotage patterns, this will make the self-discipline to actually stay on one meal a day a lot easier as well. So yeah. That is it for this video. If you have any questions for either of us, it's always leave them down below. If you like the video, like it down below, give us a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone that you think needs to learn about the 10 different ways that they can suppress their appetite while on their one meal a day diet journey with that extra, very beneficial additional tip that we've mentioned at the end as well. And if you haven't already, just hit that subscribe button to receive a lot more videos from us on a regular basis and me as well. And don't forget to check out Daniel's Facebook, his Instagram, his YouTube. I'll put links down below. And yeah, the type of videos you can expect to see on this channel are one meal a day informational videos, what we eat with our one meal a day journey as well, calisthenics workout videos, calisthenics progression videos, and many other videos to help go in the direction of obtaining and sustaining the energy levels, the fitness levels, the desire, and the dream body as well. So if those type of videos sound good to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. And I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those games. Peace.